I just wanted to show you this outfit that I have found myself in pretty much all of the time. Now, this is not me. I'm finding that when I look in the mirror, I, I don't think, oh, hello, Carmen. I think, who's, who's this old lady? But it's not like, it's not bad. It, I'm just, it's representative of something in that I am not feeling like me anymore. So I've been doing the best job I ever have in my entire life at keeping my home organized and tidy and clean. And that's great, well done me, but I have sacrificed looking after myself, I think. I don't feel like me and I think what I need, and I say this as someone who has previously put their faith in the overhaul and the makeover and knows that, you know, it's not it's not all of the answers that it maybe is sold to be. However, I think I'm in need of a postpartum glow up. My baby is almost 13 months old. I have a bit of time in the day, most days. Some days I do not get any, but right now she is napping. And I get these little pockets of time where I can actually do something that isn't just being a mam. Not that no, I say just, I don't mean just like just, I mean just like, you know, it's one role, it's one job title. There's a version of me I want to be for my daughter. I think we need the postpartum glow up. I think I need to do the hair needs sorting. I don't have time to go out and do it, so I'm just gonna be doing everything myself. It's gonna be an in-house postpartum glow up. I'm gonna be figuring out my capsule wardrobe. I'm gonna let myself buy some new clothes because I deserve it. <laughs> I really do. I'm in a bit of my life that is categorized by sacrifice and I just feel like that means I am allowed a few bits and pieces that I really like, and it doesn't have to be expensive. I really wanna be comfortable while looking stylish. And I thought I had that down, but then ultimately, I think the question is, it's the old guest test. How do I feel if someone comes around and sees me dressing how I normally dress at the moment? Would I feel like, hey, well, welcome to my home. Yes, I, you really can have it all. I don't think that's what I'd think. I think I'd think, uh, I'm sorry about my clothes and and my face and my hair. And I just don't want that for me anymore. I think I should be able to keep my life as simple as it is, but just upgraded it. We're just elevated. I only own one cardigan and it's this cardigan and I'm just finding a cardigan is, is the staple of being a mom in autumn. So I like to get some different cardigans. You know, I can whop the girls out whenever I want and I'm nice and toasty. I've been wearing this for bed and during the day. Just gives you a little, a little insight into how we're doing. So join me on this here postpartum glow up. It's a cringy old title, but it fits. It's the right title. I'm gonna be watching some Brad Mondo. We're gonna be, should I do a bit of color? I might put a bit of color in because I feel like a change is as good as a rest. I do like my natural color. Oh. I'm zooming in. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know I was doing that. It was like watching a horror film, wasn't it? Um, it's still long. I, I still like it being long. I like that I can put it out the way when she is in a hair pulling mood. Or do I go short? I think keep it long. I'm gonna keep it long because whenever I cut it short, I regret it every single time. Sort out the capsule wardrobe, sort out pajamas that can move through into day wear. So join me on this here postpartum glow up. This is the before. <laughs> cha, 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 cha. These are booty though. They're very nice. They're made of bamboo and they're really soft. I bought the wrong size though, so they're far too big. But they're also now covered in bleach stains and porridge. Bleach stains and porridge. Right then, okay. So we start off with supplies that we don't have currently. I'm starting to give up and haven't even started yet. There we go, okay. My hair's so long, I can't even see it in the mirror. So I think it's quite important to treat your hair with a little bit more respect than I am doing, but it's simply a time-related issue for that. I'm gonna tidy up these ends. A little bit of length. Okay, same on the other side. And this has to be really, really slick. Get my Melanie Chisholm on. I think that's good. All of the hair. Next, I'm gonna pull a little strand of hair out of the ponytail. Right, yes. Just like that. Now, okay. when I lift up this ponytail, mm -hmm. we're going right. to take the hair from the nape of the neck. <laughs> so this is as much as we can cut without cutting. What about if you've got really long hair though? So far away. And then this up to this. And that, that amount? That feels like a lot. Okay, I'm really nervous now, now that I'm here. Oh my God. Well, that's not 
not a straight line at all, is it? I promise you my hairdressing scissors, but my hair is just so thick. Maybe I should have done it in two smaller sections. Oh God, oh God. Commit to the process. Trust, trust in Brad. Honestly, I used to feel like my life was so together and now I'm hacking away at my own hair. <laughs> This is what motherhood does to you. But also, I just don't care. Also, which is quite cool. I like that. Oh, I'm getting hand cramps. <sighs> oh my God, go away, bit of hair. Impossible, why won't it go? Right, that's what it looks like currently. So we'll take that out and see what happens. <gasps> Some bits are quite short. Oh my goodness me, okay. Ultimate amount of layer. Gorgeous, we are gonna do this oh full on. Beautiful layering going on. Oh. Very bored of brushing my hair. Okay, so I'm pretty confident I don't want to be cutting up that much off because it feels like it'd be mental. And it's sort of assuming that I've already had like a good haircut when actually I've been cutting my hair for a while now, basically since my baby was born. And I'm not very good at it. Again, it's really like choppy and a bit terrible. Or is it great and I'm being too judgmental and not trusting the process? Who knows? Who knows? Let's have a little lucky see then. It's gone really short. I don't know if that was, I think I might've done it wrong. The, the whole point of that was that you weren't meant to take any of the length out, but I seem to have taken some of the lump the whole. So I've already cut my fringe. I cut that in a little while ago. So I'm going to just make sure it blends in nicely. It feels very drastic, even though I don't think it's particularly drastic. Anyway, I'm gonna wash it and dry it and then we'll see. How it looks. Okay, be right back. I'm sure this, I'm sure it's gonna be fine because you know what? I trust Brad, I trust Brad, I trust him, I trust him. But do I trust myself? No. <laughs> Not when it comes to hair anyway. Okay, <laughs> it's just hair. It'll grow back. Okay, <gasps> goodbye for a bit. Ooh. Does it look well? I did, didn't I? It's, it's nice, it's not really that long. I mean, it's not really that short, sorry. It's not really that short. What do we think? I am quite a fan. I don't think anyone's gonna be confusing me with Sabrina Carpenter anytime soon, but it just feels so much lighter and healthier. And I look a little bit like a King Charles Spaniel, which I'm enjoying. It's just got a lot more dimension. Still put it in a ponytail. So that concludes the hair portion of the, what's it called again? The postpartum glow up. Thank you, Brad Mondo. Okay, I thought I'd give a little bit of um, haircut feedback. It's been two or three days now. Obviously, I didn't style it like Brad Mondo suggested that you should style it, but this is how I would normally do it. I only wash my hair once a week as well, and it tends to keep the curls, so my plan is, moving forward, just give it a little bit of a curl once a week. Hope that it keeps it. I'm gonna stop tying it up really tight on my head, because that tends to be how I wear it most of the time. So if I need it out of the way, I'm just gonna go for one ponytail on the back of the head. But if I'm going out, which I am, this is, tends to be how I wear it. And I've started putting a bow in for a bit of festive fun. I've also been experimenting with my capsule wardrobe and these are two pieces I picked up from a charity shop. Yeah. So I thought I wanted to introduce more color into my capsule wardrobe, but since putting these together and feeling more like myself than I have done in a long time, I've realized I'm not really about that. Like I do like color, but I think it makes me feel a little bit too children's TV presenter. And I think I prefer feeling like not that. <laughs> to all the children's TV presenters out there, no offense. It's just not, it's not the vibe that I'm after. So yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling festive, I'm feeling very autumnal, and I'm feeling a lot more like myself, which is very good. I'm also gonna wear these socks, which I, you know, they're just socks, but they, they're like socks. These are booty socks, and they are the softest things. And I love them, but the problem with booty is that they make all of your other clothes feel like you are wearing barbed wire. I'm also, incidentally, these tights, I think they're called sheer tacks or something like that, I'll put it on the screen, but they are tights that never ever ladder, unless you get them near Velcro. They're still not mastered the Velcro thing yet, but I've had these for a long time. They're not cheap, but the idea was that they would be a lot more sustainable and that they would last a lot longer than many pairs of tights. And I just really like the look of normal tights. Doesn't look long. I highly recommend them. I've had them for a few months now and I only own one pair, and I'd love some more pairs. Sheer Tex, if you're interested and would like to send me some, then 
Yes, please. So they're really comfortable, they're really soft, really nice, and they've lasted me a very long time. And I have a cat, so that's saying something. Hello. So it is now the 5th of November. It's quite a while since we started this glow up. I should have known that nothing is ever straightforward when you have a baby. And indeed, we, we have been experiencing a hiccup. I must say that before the hiccup, it was going really well. I was feeling peppy. I was feeling cute, I was feeling like myself. It was all going very, very well. And then, and then, our household got hit by something incredibly glamorous. Something called hand, foot and mouth disease, which is kind of like a three-part illness. So firstly, there's fever, and just generally feeling terrible. That's great. Second, oral lesions. We're talking ulcers. We're talking difficult to swallow, painful mouth. And the third part, boils. <laughs> Boils on your, well, hand, foot, and mouth is the general idea, but you know, they can be anywhere. So poor little Naomi, she she had it. Unfortunately, she had it before me, so that meant that I could still be relatively alive to look after her. And then I got it, and it was horrible. It was so horrible. I didn't suffer too badly from the boils, which I'm very pleased about, but the, I did have lots of ulcers and just generally felt terrible and it's also very contagious so we sort of hid away from the world for a bit. So I went from feeling peppy and cute and optimistic to housebound, stir crazy and diseased. It's a few weeks later now and I'm feeling feeling a lot better. I'm feeling ready to to keep going with this glow. My hair looks completely different. So I've learned how to dry my fringe and I'm going to show you the next opportunity I have but that has been an absolute game changer. I will just say this is this dried naturally here. So this isn't it, this isn't it and it's full like bleh. But I've been drying my fringe properly. But again, it's just these tiny little things that are just making me feel a little bit put together. And drying my fringe properly has been an absolute game changer. Like when I dry it properly, I feel wonderful. <laughs> tiniest little thing but it's also so good because it used to be that I would only get that feeling from buying something new I'd need to get like a new top or a new dress and that would be the thing that would make me feel good because I defined good by novelty whereas now it's just like just drying my fringe properly so yeah hand foot and mouth disease that's this chapter hello so I've just put a spritz of this in I feel like I've watched so many tutorials on how to sort your fringe out how to dry how to chop it, how to, all the things. But then it just occurred to me that when I curl my hair, when I use a wand, if you hold your hair in a ringlet and let it cool down in the shape that you want it to be in, then it just keeps its shape so much longer. So I've got like a barrel brush, it's a little bit minging, so apologies, but it's got like these ceramic plates, so it, it holds, this holds the heat. So what you want to do is a few passes, kind of just alternate passes like, like this, to the right, to the left. You want to dry it, but then once it started to get dry, you just turn the head or have to spend a couple of moments like this. Let it cool down in the position that you want it to be in. And it's, it's revolutionary. It's probably something that everyone knows, but I didn't. I only just, I only just known. See, like, it's, it does, it does the thing. If you do it like that, it does the thing that I always wanted to do. And I didn't have to sit with a roller in, it doesn't take too long, it's just, just an extra moment like this. Look at that. Look at that. I feel like this is how I've been trying to get my fringe for about 10 years, and I've only just cottoned on to that postpartum glob. So I've been working on, like, the capsule wardrobe portion of this glob up. It exists in my head but I haven't quite made it make sense in the wardrobe. The wardrobe currently looks like this. So it is a little chaotic at the moment. So this is mine and Charles's things, but the mess up here, that is, that's all me. So I think we're gonna have like a declutter, a capsule wardrobe discussion. But I also wanna make my capsule wardrobe my entire wardrobe. That's how I'm feeling right now. Like I feel like I've just got it kind of sorted. It's versatile. I think it could last me the entire year. And the key thing, this is this has been the thing. So because I'm not working anymore, I've been able to go to the charity shop kind of daily. I just pop in, see what's going on. There's two near me that are really good. One, everything's 99p. So I've been kind of taking a few gambles there, seeing if there's some things that I could get that I wouldn't normally get. For example, this little blue stripey number with stitch on it is nothing that I would ever in a million years buy for myself really. But it was 99p, so I thought, let's get it, let's see how it goes. And I've been wearing it around the house and I really, really like it. <laughs> and then the other one near me 
is a little bit more pricey, but that's where I've been finding some of the some of the really, really good stuff. So I very much reached that moment where I am feeling a little bit more, you know what, ruthless, that's the word. I'm feeling more ruthless with my wardrobe. I'm getting a little bit tired of things just being like all over the place. So I kind of want to do like a capsule wardrobe video on, on its own, but I think for this portion of this video, I'm just going to talk about the things that I've been really enjoying wearing recently. So these are kind of the items that I, I I don't think I could live without. So let's just start with what I'm wearing. So I have a ton of these like boob tops. So they're for breastfeeding and they're so comfortable. I kind of have like an inbuilt bra and I really love them. This jumper, I've been rocking almost daily. The only issue with it is that it's quite light and I end up covered in sauce, covered in Weetabix, I end up covered in everything. So I've been washing it very regularly, but it's, I just love it, I really love it. This skirt I got from a charity shop and I'm really, really loving it. I used to have one very, very similar, but it ended up being too small for me. So I'm really happy. I can feel like I've got it back in my life, but just in a very different form, which is something that I just really, love because it's something that I something that I like to talk about is that when you declutter something it doesn't mean that you're necessarily saying goodbye to it forever because the th the, th the function that it has in your life can be replaced by something else you don't need that specific item and I feel like this is a great example of that I used to have a skirt like this ended up being too small for me so I got rid of it and now it has come back to me but in a way that fits me and I think that is a good example of how we can think about our possessions in life. I think it's very easy to get bogged down in the concept of ownership and think this is my thing. But I think this is where, you know, attachment becomes a problem and that it's better to think of things like you have a vacancy for an item, you have a need for something and then that need can be filled by many different things. Okay, so capsule wardrobe skirts. I've got quite a lot of them. The benefits of skirts in a capsule wardrobe is that unless you actually soil them in some form, a beautiful terminology. If you don't soil them, then they basically stay nice and clean because they're not really touching anything. Like it's dirty, if you know what I mean. Skirt number one. Skirt number two, this is Under the Stories. And I think this was originally from Depop, but I really, really love the silhouette of it. Can't really tell with this top on though. It has pockets, such a cute fit. Then I have this Topshop one, which I got from the 99p charity shop. So that's very exciting. It's a tiny, tiny little bit too small, but I still really like it, so it kind of breaks my own rules a little bit, but it's not too, too small. It's just like, it's flirting with being too small. But I think that it's really nice with some bigger, more baggy options on the top. So it's a tiny bit short, but especially if I wear it with this jumper, I think it just sort of serves a slightly different purpose because in addition to all this, there's gonna be tights, boots, because we're in winter. And then for when we feel like something a little bit longer, I have this cars skirt and this is midi length which is good so you have a few more options. I've got like a basic silhouette that I really like which is kind of a short skirt and tight top with baggy jumpers and cardigans. But sometimes you just want to be a little bit more, I don't know, a bit more flowy, a bit more feminine in terms of how I actually move which is very welcome. This is also a good example of something that I bought from Vinted or Depop, I can't remember which one, but I bought it slightly oversized. I had it taken in so that it fits my waist properly. I also want to show you something that I've been wearing around the house, which has been an absolute game changer. Again, charity shop. Basically everything that I buy is from a charity shop or from Vinted, because I'm I'm a bit of a fuss about when it comes to where my things come from. Like, I just don't like the idea that my money's gone towards something that I fundamentally disagree with. I talk about this at length in other videos, this isn't the time. Also, I've not really talked about tops. In terms of tops, I just have a few that I've been rotating. I have four of these vest tops and I just wear them most days because again breastfeeding it just makes it so much easier and then usually it's just a, a jumper or a card. I'll show you the jumper that I've been wearing all the time. So it is covered in food because that's my life now but it's this. Now I've just always had it, I just always really liked Sylvester. I don't know why, don't know what it is. I just think he is a very handsome cat. Not in like a I don't have feelings for him, that sort of implies that. I'm not suggesting that I fancy Sylvester the cat. I'm a married woman. If you don't find me in one of these skirts, I'm generally wearing leggings and a jumper, and it's often this jumper. Okay, so let me introduce you to this dress, which I bought thinking that it would just be really cozy to wear in the house, and it's ended up just being one of my absolute favorite things that I own. Whoosh. So it's full length, it's got these beautiful kind of mystical elf sleeves. It's super, super cozy. I think I got it for like four pounds. I think one of the most important things for building a capsule wardrobe or a minimalist wardrobe is to have things which feel very, very low effort. For example, like I'm not good, I don't have to think about what goes with, with what, I just stick this on and I feel put together, I feel feminine. 
I these annoy me, I'll be honest, but then I do this. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. And this tends to be how I wear this. But if you can find something that you just put on on top of your normal clothes and you just instantly feel a little bit more put together, that is in many ways the secret. Because remember, true value of a capsule wardrobe comes from understanding that fundamentally we can't be bothered to be dealing with all this stuff, to be dealing with all these clothes and to be thinking, making these decisions every single day. Like, that's it's, it's too much. We've got, we're, we're, we're built for more than that. So you need to embrace your internal laziness and work around it. And I find that this dress is ultimately that. I feel a little bit like I should be in Lord of the Rings in this dress, which is basically how I should always feel. But it's been such a weird time because I've ended up holding on to so many clothes because I didn't know what size I was going to be after I gave birth. But I feel like I've been at the same size for a little while now to be able to make these kind of decisions, which is why I feel that the time for decluttering has come. But just knowing that there are outfits that I can rely on and also knowing that it doesn't matter how I feel on that day, there's going to be something that I can rely on to make me feel a little bit more put together. It's really helped me. I'm feeling a lot more myself and I think having clothes that fit me, having some variation in terms of different fits and styles, I'm just starting to feel a lot more myself again and I'm sure a lot of that was inevitable because she's she's just turned 14 months so I am quite far away from the person I was when I gave birth now. Obviously I am forever changed in every single way <laughs> but just having that connection to the person that I wanted to be before I was pregnant or the person that I was before I was pregnant is there's something kind of grounding about it, I think. Well, thank you very much for watching. This is very close to my face, but that's okay. I feel like it's a little bit of an anticlimax, but I do feel so much more myself. And if you are in a similar situation, it's just those tiny, tiny little steps, I think, while also understanding that you, you are forever changed, so you're never gonna feel like your old self again in its entirety. And that's, that's not only fine, it's beautiful. It's part of it, it's part of growing part of changing, part of being a mother. But I think for me, it just felt like I needed something somewhere concrete and safe to be able to stand so that when I looked in the mirror, I didn't just see someone who was completely absorbed in their, the needs of others. Now I feel like it's just a little bit, there's a little slice for me. And it's because I have tried to set myself up in a way so that it's easy to do. I think that's the beauty of capsule wardrobes and the beauty of trying to automate as much as you can, the beauty of trying to have things built into habit and systems. These things kind of take the pressure off your mental space so that you can focus on your daily, the daily maintenance of a tiny human being. Well, thank you very much for watching. I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the day in my, with my elf sleeves and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Lots and lots of love, goodbye, bye bye bye.